Welcome to your favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. And I'm Brian Moss. We're going to be taking a look at some uh, Paul Pope deep cuts before THB. But first, you guys must know that there is a Patreon. Uh, and the King Kayfabers on the Patreon have access to everything we talk about first on the aftermarket. Because we give them the videos before anybody else gets to see them. Uh, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make, but we'll get into that in a bit. Brian Moss is co-hosting today. And Brian Moss is from the uh, very privileged position of calling Columbus, Ohio his home base. So aside from things like the Billy Ireland Comic Art Library and things like that, uh, you have Jeff Smith in, the, in, in that area. And uh, we took a look at some of that Jeff Smith comic material from Thorn before uh, he started making Bone, probably a decade before Bone started happening. Well, guess what? Paul Pope is from Columbus as well. Went to OSU, I believe. Mm -hmm. Went to OSU, born in Bowling Green. Went to OSU in Columbus, Ohio. So he's an Ohio boy. Yes. Mm, so, yeah, major Columbus um, impact and influencer. And this gives Brian access to some super early Paul Pope comics that you and I would have no chance of getting our hands on, probably. <laughs> so the first piece we got, he got here is uh, Paul Pope's uh, The Corrupter, Horse Press, still called Horse Press at that time. Got a P.O. box. 1993 is the uh, date on the indicia here. And uh, from word go, we're looking at interesting uh, comics here. You could tell that it's a little bit less developed than the material that he has going on in uh, THB. Mm -hmm. But all the hallmarks are here, dude. The thick uh, brush line. Mm -hmm. Very courageous sort of uh, brush strokes on the stuff. Yeah. The way he builds the figures. A lot of this early stuff, Ed, like when we're in this era... It, some of it you'll see in the faces has like a Hernandez Brothers kind of feel to it when he draws the simple lines close up and stuff like that. You get a little bit of that, but then he like jacks it up with the contrapasto, the high high blacks and whites. So it's a really nice experimental idea, you know. And just like look at these lines right here, man. Mm -hmm. So expressive, totally communicating exactly you know what it's supposed to. Mm hmm. There's, I don't know too much about the history of this book outside of, I think it may have only been like a hundred of these made. Okay. Um, so super uncommon. Um, I don't think rare, but uncommon. A hundred, a hundred copies. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> yeah, rare. Especially, well, I guess I'm spoiled, right? Yeah, especially for the, uh, the Paul Pope aficionados who, you know, are plentiful. Right. Totally. Prior to publication of drawn novels, Sintitulo, The Ballad of Dr. Richardson, spent a long time doing strips you might call didactic. They're all, it, they all illustrate one idea. Lean freedom is better than fat slavery. Uh, of the strips I did in this period, perhaps The Corrupter is the best. This version was drawn in 93 to run as a poster to be published by the magazine The Exchange after the original, which was done in 89 and called Spirit. So mm. he redrew an older idea. Yeah. Man, I would like to see that 1989 version. Totally, yeah. That would be like a gem if yeah. it was ever published. We have uh, kind of an Ashcan preview of The Ballad of Dr. Richardson. Before this comes Sin Tutulo. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sin Tutulo is a really cool book because uh, you get this um, nice, it's black and white, but with these gray um, tones on it. Yeah. Beautiful book. So... To have this uh, ballad of Dr. Richardson as a follow-up is like a nice, is really cool. Yeah. You have Sintitulo, right? Yeah, I have a few copies of that. All right, man. Let's pump this up and uh, have a reason to pull out Sintitulo. Totally, yeah. Look at that, dude. Some pull quotes from, from Will Eisner and, and Pat Boyette, of all people. <laughs> That's fun. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, this is the original uh, printing of this book. There's a second version of this book that has a black cover on it. Mm -hmm. That was probably the second printing of that. That was a little later. So it's really cool to have this because you get the um, painted cover uh, with the, you know, the mylar. So really cool piece right here. We have the book edited by Robin Snyder. This is the person who would published that late period Steve Ditko stuff mm -hmm. in black and white, those packages and things. Yep. So Mars. that's interesting uh, in the indicia here. The original artboards for this book are available for $40 each 
Each comes mailed flat via UPS, signed by the artists. You could have you could have made out fat. Yeah, humble beginnings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get an original Paul Pope now. More quotes: Bob Kaniger, Tim Truman, Dave McKean. The way this works, like uh, maybe maybe even this this kind of thing, or maybe he took the time to to Xerox the complete works and send it to his favorite cartoonists, or or, or hand it off to them at a convention mm-hmm. and get those pull quotes that are highly valuable. Yep. Nice tribute. Yeah, Taps. Mm-hmm. There's that Frisky Follies comic or whatever it was that has the Taps in it. This video was brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels of support at the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon, including the King Kayfaber level, which completely completely mitigates the Kayfabe effect by uh, delivering those supporters all the videos before anybody else gets them. Ultimately, our videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Brian Moss, co-host on this episode, has Outer Heaven 1 out, working on issue number 2. And uh, these books are available at his Etsy store by way of his Instagram. This is his contact information right here. If you're interested in getting your hands on Outer Heaven, make sure you hit him up. Uh, Shouts to everybody who bought the first couple print runs. I think it's now in its third printing. Mm. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you soon. Uh, in time for the holidays, collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree for the 10-year anniversary. This is uh, going to be a a 504-page hardcover book with 140 pages of extras, including a lot of artwork I drew exclusively for this book. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy is coming to you at the end of the year also. Um, Some volumes of X-Men Grand Design out of print right now. Get the handy-dandy collection, you get it all. Red Room Crypto Killers 1 and 2 are out right now as of this recording. Uh, It is the last season of Red Room Comics. Two trade paperbacks of that are out there in the wild. Jimmy has Street Angel Princess of Poverty forthcoming. It is a companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. And if you have both volumes, you have all of Jimmy's uh, Street Angel content to date. And True Crime Funnies uh, has sold out for Jimmy, but he is uh, rushing to press a new print run for this fall. Uh, But you could read the entire True Crime Funnies at Jimmy's Patreon. He is also the author of Hulk Grand Design and the artist behind Plain James. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. Yep. Now, just off rip, this like this is kind of like where Paul Pope is like dealing with structure. But this is interesting because it's before he does that loose, uh, non perspective, like loose non perspective fluidness. Yeah, but you can still see it coming out. It's true. Like he like he's got the energetic lines, but he's using real perspective. Mm-hmm. Some some semblance of a straight edge. Yeah. I was looking at the uh the Dark Knight Returns documentary that uh, they did about an hour long program mm-hmm. and uh they talk with uh Frank Miller obviously and he talks about it takes you a year to learn how to ink with a brush. Yeah. And when you do, when you figure that out, your staircases are warmer and mm-hmm. stuff. And you know what that means? It just it's, it's that more expressive line. Yeah, totally. It's not dead. How how thick is Sintatulo? Um, it's about pager? yeah. I would say it's anywhere from about sixty to um, about forty eight to sixty, maybe. Okay. So it's a little smaller, but it's been a while since I read a guy. So I would say this would be an equivalent to the same size. Maybe this could be a little thicker. <clears throat> so as yeah. you. I'm just curious how many pages he had under his belt because, like, we're slowly watching that style develop just even through this the Ballad of Dr. Richardson book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, you can see, I like mean, even like, right there. Yeah, right? it's like he's here, he's, he's arrived, man. And that's kind of like his wheelhouse at the time, like, he, uh, towards the ends of the stories, you would get that. I mean, even that right there, right? You're starting to get the uh, Pope we know, you yeah. know? And then uh, Santillo, the development's kind of the same. Like, you see it. Starting off a certain way and then ending a different way. Very expressive at that point. Yeah, here's what's available uh, at this point, man. Sintatulo, 84 pages. Thank you. Uh, it's, there's a poster. Mm-hmm. Card sheet, which is funny. Yeah. That speaks to the, to the time. Mm-hmm. The Exchange, a magazine of culture, humor, quarterly, 56 pages. Pope's regular series, THB and H.R. Watson, begin in the pages of The X. Uh, each issue of the X features film reviews and record reviews. 
Interesting. This would have to be something maybe local, I would say, or regional, because I just if I never seen or heard of that in my life. So right there, ha that would be really cool to find the that stuff. And we're starting to uh, to get the cult of personality piece mm -hmm. that uh, Paul Pope also brought to uh, comics. Totally, yeah. We got the we got the portrait, the kind of like soft focus image. Mm -hmm. Paul Pope uses eighteen by twenty four hot press Bristol board, op opaque acrylic inks. Talks about the brushes, the art gum eraser, mm -hmm. and then uh, born in nineteen seventy has has a straight up legit oh. author bio. Mm -hmm. So this would have been around the time I think he was graduating from OSU, maybe. So the story's about a professor there. So it's kind of like a nice little, like, to see where he started. Right. right. To see where he's going. And then this comes out in 96, 97, after everything's already popped off. Yeah. THB has done his trick. One trick ripoff. I think that that was uh, floating around in, like, Dark Horse Presents or something. Mm -hmm. Escapo is out. Yep. And there we go. We're there. Yeah. We get in our iconic images of them. So this is interesting because it's obviously a CD booklet, like manufactured, mm -hmm. but he treats it as a art form. So he's, it's really uh, like methodical. I actually found this at a um, hole in a wall comic, comic shop in Bowling Green, funny enough. Uh, where it was like a buck or something like that. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so this is a good kind of promo piece for, mm -hmm. for his bibliography of work and stuff. Yeah, you can kind of just like give somebody that passively and it's like pretty cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah, nice like kind of tabletop giveaway piece. Mm -hmm. Very lushly well, well produced. Totally. Now that's it for the, the comics ephemera. Mm -hmm. But you got your hands on like four beautiful silk screens. Yeah. There you go, buddy. All right. So, of course, we're not going to be able to <laughs> get them in the screen all too well. Right. Incomplete. But, like, uh, look at this beautiful piece. And we'll take a snapshot and show you this lush yeah. work. So, at the time, um, this was considered, I think, a THB canon, actually. And what so, do you mean by that? So, this is actually part of the his story, part of the narrative okay. for THB. So, I don't know if that's true or accurate, but that's just what was communicated. Well, I mean, it looks like HR. Yeah, we have that in there. We have the uh, THB right there. Um, and then over here, let's see if we can find some dates. Look at, I think it's 97. The Silk Street represents commitment of the graphic medium and celebrating triple lineage as a cartoonist. American it's a, Comics. It's over here. It's uh, July 1997. Nice. So this one's not numbered, obviously, of 400. So there's you'll know you'll recognize this if you have his art book or if you just type it online. There's like a, a slab of him in New York on like a street posted up on a wall, and you'll see him walking across the street, and this is the piece that's behind him. So this one is definitely one of my favorites of all the silk screens, definitely. Nice. And so, did you, how, did you get this in any? Uh... Oh yeah. So the way I got this one was um, from the Columbus Museum of Art. Um, my friend Brett worked there, and he—I can't remember if he gifted this to me or sold it to me. Mm -hmm. But either way, that's how I acquired it from, and that's how I got most of these silk screens. Honestly, this one I ordered. You the next one up. Because okay, cool. that's a pretty cool background. Yeah, totally. So then this one I ordered, um, just because it's like once you start, just keep them going. So. This one also, like, um, I think it was just a piece he made. And Paul actually, I think, was even doing um, painting in college. So um, I think this is his way of expressing and communicating the idea of painting, but through a different technique. If anyone knows anything about the process of silk screening, um, it's an art form that's still used for shirt making, albums, posters, etc. But it has a higher quality than just an illustration or a print, but not as strong as like, let's say a painting. So it's almost like a, an affordable high piece of art. It's wild colors he chose to use here, man. Very earth tony. And yeah. then he's got that ombre. I wonder how you do that. Yeah. Or like get this kind of like pebbly texture, you mm -hmm. know, like it's all, it's all lost on me. Yeah. I've never really silk screened anything, man, but yeah, uh, to get a pull because he's working with really great, um, people like profession, like people who are experts in this because to get that gradient um that transition so smooth 
you've had to have been like silk screening for like decades or running a shop for decades. Like that's just not uh, a weak hand, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then like your blacks here are going to be uh, India ink. And then this one's signed uh, 142 of 250. So try to find that one. Probably impossible. And now we're on to the diesel stuff? No, not yet. This one is a, actually a reprint. So this one um, has the same character that is from the Diesel series, it looks like. but And I think it was actually done around the same time. But this one specifically is a second printing of this that he did about a decade later. Yeah. And you can see some of these great... 2005 like, is the date. Mm -hmm, of the original one, which I missed out on. So to have this again... Um, he reprinted it. I think it comes in two different colors. But you're starting to see like those aspects of how he thinks as an artist, as a painter, with you're getting these like distressed um, you know, markings. Some of it even feels like um fingerprints almost, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're getting a lot of color variation. And so it's cool to celebrate this stuff, everyone, because you're getting like a graphical interpretation of a higher form of art outside the medium, but that um, complements comics. So this is like, that's why I'm a big fan of his uh, silk screen work, actually. So it's the way he thinks about it and everything. Yeah. Now the final piece, couldn't even bring in the house. Like, like it was impossible to even put onto the table. I don't know if you know the dimensions, man, but it might, it must be four and a half feet high by three and a half, four feet we're, wide. We're five. It's probably, like, I think five feet tall at least, and maybe five and a half. Yeah. And then it is wide, about, I would say about three or four feet. Yeah, yeah totally. totally, man. Amazing ombre with the colors is on that piece as well. Yeah. And that's the diesel piece. So explain what that is. Yeah, so that piece I got through, once again, um, Brett, he sold it to me. But he acquired that one from another guy named Brett, which is the person who originally did the silk screens for the diesel promotion. This is at least the story I, would I was told. And what's diesel? Uh, diesel is a clothing company. Uh, it could be based out of New York, I'm assuming. Uh, Paul Pope has backgrounds in fashion. I think he was even a model at one point. So he um, would under... That would be completely to his liking. So during that time, he was designing like camo through inking for like their clothes. And so he was doing his own line of designs. And within that, the diesel shops would have that, the silk screen that I have. Now, to pull a screen that large, that's like almost six feet tall, Yeah, that, there's not much testing happening there, right? And it's going to be very expensive. So once again, to get that ombre transition in there, and just getting those colors exactly right. So the one I have is the, um, of approved test print i see and that thing um it's not even it's just remarkable at at the piece of the scale and how it was done i wish there was like a recording of that process yeah let's see what know? that squeegee looks like yeah exactly so it's one of those things where it's definitely sight to behold in a great piece of like probably like one of the peak paul pope expressions of his like talent and skill and concepts put together the fashion meets comics um meets technique and then that's all celebrating this amalgamation of an image so definitely i would say the silkscreen stuff is like a part of paul's career that not is pretty esoteric that i think should be highlighted more and so this is a great way to do that yeah super cool thank you so much for taking these suckers off the walls and traveling from Columbus, Ohio to, to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to show these off on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Uh, next time we connect, man, send to Tulo. Got to put that under the Hell microscope, yeah. man. It's totally. worth looking at, uh, at Paul Pope's work uh, in, in any, any possible uh, fashion that we can. The dude was influential on a generation of cartoonists. Uh, the, the people that started using these thick brushes that uh, you see... Uh, uh, you know, Becky Kloon and Farrell Dalrymple, mm -hmm. Nathan Fox. Like, I've never necessarily seen them mention Paul right. Pope in an interview or anything like that. But those kind of brush lines were not made before this dude yeah. here, man. So he left an, an indelible mark totally. on uh, the culture of comic books and uh, worth worth celebrating for sure. Totally, yeah. Here's to more uh, Battle and Boy 
THB, anything else he has in the works, and uh, let's try to get this dude on the channel ASAP. Yeah, we, totally. we need that Paul Pope shoot interview. You good to go? Totally. Let's do it. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. The Cartoonist Cafe Patreon is where we mitigate the Cafe effect by allowing you to get all the videos before anybody else gets them and give you first dibs on the aftermarket. Ultimately, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make. Brian, tell the people what's out there, dude. Uh, definitely check out Outer Heaven number one. Number two is in the works. Uh, you can go to my Instagram, Strange Things Moss. And you can go to my Etsy store, Strange Things Moss. Um, just hit me up and I'll get you a copy. Super cool, man. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus Edition is coming to you at the end of 2023. Make sure you put in your orders ASAP because we just hit the print button, so that makes it a limited uh, edition. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what that print run is, and we know how many people have already ordered it. So snooze you lose, or at least until we get that uh, second printing that'll come you know, six months after this one runs out. Uh, we're collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree plus 140 pages of additional material. Also, this Christmas comes X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback, where I'm collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works inside of uh, one trade paperback volume, and there are some out-of-print volumes, so this will be your opportunity to get it all in one clip. Red Room, Crypto Killers, Season 3 of Red Room. There are two trade paperbacks out on the stands right now, but this last run of Red Room uh, is completely uh, self self-contained, so you see any of these issues, give them a shot, you dig it. Grab another one. Uh, Jimmy has True Crime Funnies. Check it out on his Patreon right now because you guys bought all the physical copies that he uh, published. Don't worry, though. He's going to be republishing those within the next couple of months, this fall sometime. And uh, he'll let you know when those will be available. Snooze you lose on those, man. Get in uh, early. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is a trade paperback collecting all of Jim's pre-image comics, Street Angel comics. So you have Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, you get the forthcoming Street Angel Princess of Poverty, you got all of Jimmy's Street Angel comics uh, to date. We have merchandise, we have newsletters, we have all sorts of stuff going on in the links in the description below. All these uh, ways that you can continue to support the cartoonist kayfabe channel. Brian Moss, give these people the marching order so that we can be on our way. Read more comics.